Hey Pony Pals, it's Emma from Paint Pony Studios and today we have a much, much requested video um, from you guys. Uh, I've had a lot of questions about my record book and this is the same record book that we use in our Wings and Tails 4-H. Um, so all of our members who join, they get this actual record book format. Now some people have chosen to um, use a different format other than this and this is just your basic format of record book. I have an actual separate um, record book for like insurance purposes should anything happen to my horses um, and I try to update that on a regular basis as I get more horses in but this is more like um, something that will help you prepare for shows and get a basic idea of what you have in your collection. Um, it doesn't go into um, details but as you can see mine is like super duper thick. It's just a binder. Um, I actually might want to go get a bigger binder at some point. And so I have my I actually should redo like my stable logo on the front. And then all of our 4-H kids have the Names and Tails Club um, Wild Horse 4-H project on the back. But let's go ahead and get started and look through this bad boy and see what is in it. Here we have our record book and I'll just open it up. You guys can see that I have some extra stuff in here that um, these are a couple of ribbons from horses that are for sale. Um, a certificate of authenticity for stipple. Again, there's my stable logo that I desperately need to redo. Um, all of our 4-H kids have, uh, you need to list your name, your county that you're in 4-H and your barn name. And then we start with our inventory. Now this is just a basic inventory. As you can see, I only have, um, I have my show string in here. So these are like the horse's show name their mold number, um, or in case of stone, you can just write like, as you can see down here, I have like Peter Stone Thoroughbred, Peter Stone Pony. Um, their sex is in this column. So basically mare, stallion, um, you know, filly or colt would go in here. And you don't obviously need to write the whole thing out. Um, just write like M for mare, S for stallion, etc. Breeds in this column colors in this column, finish, so that would be um, OF matte, OF glossy, custom matte, custom glossy, um, and then like um, even for stone you could put something as like uh, FCM would be factory custom, that means the mold has been altered, and then the value of the horse. Now when I put a value down, I always look to see eBay, um, I, I always check eBay to see what um, a horse has sold for in the past. Not what, not what listings are currently available on eBay, but what they have actually sold for in the past and use that as a value just for insurance purposes so I know what the maximum is that I could get back if this horse was damaged. So I have, and I have not updated this since Briarfest of 2017. So if you actually look over here, you can see that this is um, stuff that I have not updated yet. Um, that I actually could update. And I will actually pull this out and do an example. And I do have extra sheets in case I get a new horse. But let's go ahead and I just got a stone Arab pole. And I will go ahead and put her in here. So her full show name is Mare Naked Lady. Some of you may have seen her on Instagram. And she is the uh, P.S. Arab Foal. She's a filly. Now I have her as a Spanish Janet. And her color is Chestnut Splash. She is an OF matte finish. And then I don't have anything on me to look up her value at this time. I know what I paid for her, but on Stone's website, she might actually be different than what I paid for her because I got her secondhand. Um, so that would be the end of this column. And then when you're done with an entire page, what you want to do is go all the way down to the bottom and we actually have like a total down there of what all your horse's values are worth on that particular page. Right next, we actually have a tack and accessories inventory. 
And as you can see, I don't exactly have a lot of tack myself. I don't show performance, um, but you would list your item, your whether you bought the item or made it, the description of the item, who made the item if it wasn't you, and then how much did the item cost you? Next in our record books, we have a section for class lists. So when you go to shows, and I have a lot in here, as you can see, we have like the Slay Rally class list um, from this previous year. And we, of course, this show has already passed. So you can see that this must have been, um, was this a combination? Oh, this was CCR. So this one was Slay Rally, this was CCR. And they had um, Briar and Stone, I believe, showing together for Breed is what it looks like. Um, so you can see as we went down, I would cross off classes that were gone. Um, and I know I've gone over class lists with you guys before on our YouTube channel where you write the name of your horse in the class list so you can tell um, who goes in what class and when those classes are. Another class list. And then this one is actually one that I'm currently working on that I don't have filled out for Country Fair 2018. Next is our little breed reference section. And for me, this is where I store all of the documentation for my horses. Um, I have like one of these neat little pencil pouches. They're really, really convenient. And so basically I have everything in here from uh, COAs. So like that one's for my Rachel Alexandra. Um, to, there's another little COA for like the Premier Club horses. Um, collectability information. So my design a horse, there's his um, design a horse information. And then there are um, some breed cards that I have in here. So like there's Frisian Sport Horse. And we plan on putting out some breed cards on our website so you guys have something a little more simplistic to use for shows if you want. And now this is everything that fits in this specific pouch, but for some horses, um, I need a little bit bigger of a breed description or color description. So that's where like, this little section here comes in, is I have just a sleeve of, and normally I'll just use a sleeve to protect the specific um, entry, but these are all the breed cards, etc., that I cannot actually fit um, in the, pencil pouch. And normally when you go to a show, the maximum documentation they will allow you to have is an eight and a half by 11 page. So just keep that in mind when you're making your breed references that eight and a half by 11 or smaller. You don't want a breed book that's absolutely huge or, or a breed reference that's absolutely huge just because it takes up a lot of space on the table. Now this is a section for our 4-H kids that I haven't probably filled out in a while but this would be our like activities and events section. So everything that our kids um, have gone to and whether it's 4-H or, or not, um, the date that they went, the location, what you did when you were there, and then the, the level, national, regional, local, etc. And then we also have the same thing for model horse shows. So you can actually keep track of what model show you were at, who placed, and what placing they got. And this is also something I haven't filled out in a while either. Um, for our club, we have tried to do a specific high point tracker um, where depending on how many shows you go to per year, your horses rack up points, um, which is something that we hope to implement like later this year, hopefully. Next little section would be purchases. And unfortunately, this is also something that I haven't updated. So I don't know how much money I've spent on my horses in a while, but let me see if I can find a sheet that's actually been filled out. Here we go. So this is herd purchases and herd sales. So up at the top, we have our purchases, the name of the horse, mold number. So basically this is the same as your regular show string inventory. Then we also have our herd sales down at the bottom after you've totaled your purchases. And you can see that we have what horse you sold, um, did you sell the horse or did you give it away, and then where, how much did you make, and then how much was the actual value of the horse that you had in your record book to begin with. This is also another section that I have. Um, uh, 
This is also another section that I have information from horses that I have purchased previously. So this was my welcome letter to the um, Briar 2015 Premier Club, along with the sketch that came with them. So I use that for collectability. That's really good to have. Um, back when JAH was still a thing, I bought a Pomplamoose. I actually, um, you had to put in for a lottery to get Pomplamoose. And so I made sure to copy this and print it out and mark that I had paid the horse and when the horse was due to ship and how much I had to pay. Here's another one when JC Penny had special runs as I bought these guys and I marked that they had been paid. This is another, like an invoice from Stone that has some other, um, you can see it's stapled, so it has some other pages with some details about the horse that I got. Um, invoice for, uh, I believe that was Sanku, um, or some of the other horses that I've gotten from Winston Editions to paint. This is another stone invoice, more stone invoices, some eBay invoices, another stone invoice. And then at the very end here, I have, um, these are just some other pencil pouches or another, um, just a plastic sleeve for holding ribbons. And these are the ones that I have put in here that I have not exactly gotten a chance to either make a video on or put them into my um, specific accordion folders because I do actually have folders that I store all my horse's ribbons in. There you have it, Pony Pals. There's our basic record book. Now, I do actually have the template for this. If any of you would be interested, just let me know in the comments below and I can actually probably put it up on our website when we get our breed cards going. Until next time, Pony Pals. Bye.